So today, I'm gonna, I want to share with you two uh, growth strategies, product-led strategies. One is customer acquisition, and the second is more retention-led growth. You can apply these tactics to your product today to help you drive growth and a scalable and more effective growth within your organization. So I'm going to cover these tactics and going to touch each point there. And basically, the goal is to help you build this growth engine and apply your product into that. Before we dive in, for those of you who don't know Gainsight, we have three uh, main products. One is the customer success platform that helps customer success teams mitigate churn risk and orchestrate customer journeys. The second is product experience. We're gonna, you're going to see some slides out for some uh, screenshots in this uh, session as well. But this product is the uh, experience product that allows you to uh, drive adoption by using product analytics, in-app engagement, and email engagement all in one. And the third product is a community product that allows you to grow through a community strategy. So this is kind of tiny matter. We, the reason you're trying to uh, focus on product-led growth uh, even today is because it really helps you optimize those key business metrics that basically contribute to the way mar the market analyzes your company. So especially in volatile times, you want to make sure that you're able to prioritize these product tactics so you can scale and build a more sustainable growth to survive these downturns. Um, and if we think about what led originally the product-led growth uh, concept and strategy, um, originally what we saw is every year we have more and more product competing for the same buyer. So the landscape is becoming very, very competitive. And companies are looking for ways to optimize their customer acquisition, uh, which is steadily going up. Um, and one of the reasons is obviously all of everybody's bidding uh, and trying to uh, scale their customer acquisition and basically compete with each other. The third element that also uh, worth mentioning is in the subscription model, you want to make sure that you're able to retain these customers. So today we're going to cover these two uh, growth factors. We're going to dive into the specific set of tactics you can apply to improve them because eventually retention led growth is somewhat overlooked in the market, but you can also improve your product to address these challenges. Looking at the way the market evaluates companies, you can see that product led growth companies are growing twice as fast compared to the uh, traditional SaaS. And the reason is they're able to effectively and efficiently scale their go-to-market uh, and leveraging their product to do so. So worth mentioning, especially now, and this is going to be the main drivers for companies to transition to product-led growth. I'll ask you kind of a quick uh, raise of hands. How many of you are applying some type of product-led growth motion today? Raise your hand. Not a lot. How many of you guys are coming from a B2B background? All right, B2C? Cool. Just FYI, product-led growth uh, means that it applies to both uh, uh, industries, both B2B and both B2C. Uh, we at Gainside are focusing, obviously, on SaaS and B2B. Before we dive into the first tactic, I want to cover just what is product-led growth, if you guys didn't hear about that term. Um, this is basically taking your product and putting it on the forefront of the customer journey. It's leveraging the product as a vehicle to drive value to your customers. That's what it's all about. And in the, these set of tactics I'm going to go over, it's going to involve, number one, what type of features, what type of features you want to prioritize to help you drive better growth, what type of data points you need to collect to tie these business metrics to your core feature and usage metrics, and three, what type of automation tactics you can apply to automate and scale your growth motion. So we start with customer acquisition. We call it acquisition-led growth. Normally, early-stage companies, they want to acquire uh, 
customers as soon as possible, as at scale as possible. And when you launch and invest in trial experience, what you're doing is, is essentially allowing users to experience value without being tied to human resources like pre-sales and sales heavily on those first mile of product. You can leverage free trial to just have the product take some of the heavy lifting in introducing your product and basically surface uh, value. So the business KPI we are trying to optimize is customer acquisition cost. It's basically the amount of the, the company spends on acquiring new customers. And this should be your North Star as a lagging indicator when you're trying to optimize through a trial experience. So looking at how can you optimize this trial experience, this morning there was a fantastic uh, session with Atlassian, but we can see that um, although 65% of SaaS introducing a trial, not many of them are optimizing. And here are the several tactics you can use to optimize your trial experience. We can see how Atlassian, for example, is really uh, optimizing their sign-up. You should treat that as an active campaign. It's always up. And the goal is to reduce friction. You can see how they use social uh, single sign-on just to reduce friction and also how they message the value and some logo and outcome if you're tr gonna try their product. One of the things, one of the tactics you should build into your sign-up flow is to basically ask the user to give you their a sense of what type of role are they now uh, in so you can learn about the different types of roles that are accessing these trials. And second, what are the objectives? Because eventually you want to focus on the problem and you want to make sure that the objectives they sign up for are the right ones and you can, and you can optimize the experience based on who they are, based on the role and based on the objective, especially when you're gonna, we're going to see how we, when we try to measure and we try to message these, these uh, users, these two data factors are key. And what we also saw that when you introduce these into the sign-up process, which might sound counterintuitive, it actually increases conversion, it increases the chances that they will activate the trial because we kind of created a set of expectation. So this being used by Gainsight, but also other customers of ours using these type of tactics to understand uh, the customer journey before it even begins. Another great example from ConvertKit, uh, they also leverage the sign-up process to further understand uh, potentially where you're coming from. You might be already an experienced person in using different tools, and you want to know about that when you start analyzing and prioritizing your roadmap. When you look at the data, you want to ask yourself, you know, who gave me that feedback? Who is doing these usage patterns? I want to know their background. So it's a great way to say how they collect quickly. A um, couple of things like, are you using different tools before? Where is the maturity from the customer perspective as well as what is the target audience? It gives them an in indication of the size of account, which as we know, small account versus enterprise account will behave differently and will have different expectation. Another great example of a feature you might want to prioritize, especially if you have a more broader B2B platform, and this example is coming from Software AG, they've built templatized, pre-configured onboarding experiences so you can, as soon as you sign up, you don't necessarily need to go to production and implement everything. They're showing you the art of the possible. We're seeing that also in monday.com. Uh, as soon as you come in, there's pre-configured pre-configured set of templates, you can start launching and just experiencing the value of what the platform can provide to you without completely being onboarded to the platform. Within the trial, one of the major element is to keep users engaged. A uh, user will give you potentially uh, three to seven business days to show them value. Sometimes if it's a very simple product, it might be just minutes. Um, most trials today, I would say 40% are giving 30 days trial, but what we saw in the data is you have a very small amount of days, three to seven days to prove value to customers and make to their shortlist or be, potentially convert them. What you want to do in these days is make sure that you're keeping them engaged because you're competing to their attention span. Right? We are very busy, especially in product management. We always have things to do. So um, any type of buyer from you, if it's B2B or B2C, they have a lot of uh, distraction in the way. You want to make sure that you create 
uh, a personalized nurturing stream both outside the product using email and inside the product to guide them to value. So that's one of the tactics to improve conversion, to make sure you're continuously keeping them engaged and focusing on the window of opportunity that you have with them during the trial. Another tactics uh, moving to automation that you can use is ma basically making sure that as soon as they onboard, you can offer them a simple checklist of elements they need to go and experience in order to experience value with your product, with your solution. So one of the ways is to make sure that all the resources are available for them. You can also make sure that they have the right assets, videos, walkthroughs. It should be very targeted and based on who they are, you can really drive uh, and accelerate time to value for them as they sign up. So uh, finishing this first strategy with core metrics you should track when you optimize trial, uh, number one is, is the source of these signups. You want to uh, track organic and inorganic sources to make sure that you're able to identify which is the marketing channel that drives the best uh, signups to your product, as well as uh, what type of uh, aha moments feature usage within the trial that drove uh, or m help you understand that this, this person actually experienced value of your product. So mapping these aha moments as features, tracking that customers actually are touching these features and experience value is, is the second one. A third one is the user retention, helps you understand how many days do you have before customers go dark. And usually, again, it might be an hour, it might be three days, it might be seven days. User retention and cohort analysis really helps you understand that. Uh, and another two important KPIs are one is time to value, classically measured by funnels, just to understand how long does it take them to go and, and experience each functionality. And a new one, which is product qualified leads, and this is something that can augment your marketing qualified leads, your sales qualified leads, by just uh, helping them uh, adding to these leads intent data. If someone signs up, normally marketing will know their firmware graphics and, and some of the uh, top of, top of uh, funnel uh, engagement. What you can do is augment that data with some behavioral data from your product so you kind of create a product qualified leads and these are a very powerful way to just make sure that uh, you're tracking because th that factor is going to be the closest to predict what trials are actually going to uh, convert. So moving to the second product-led strategy, which is retention-led strategy, uh, and how can you build and design product experiences that drive successful outcome. So just a few facts, uh, especially in the subscription recurring business, 5% increase in customer retention can lead to increased, dramatic increase in revenue, especially in this, these times. Obviously, in, in, in renewal and in recurring revenue, the, 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 the way you can optimize that is going to be covered in the next couple of slides, but this is a, a major factor that you want to make sure that your product is assisting in that retention. Another important fact to remember as your company matures, the majority of revenue comes from existing customers, and it gets more costly to acquire new customers. So if you think about set of features, roadmap, pricing and packaging, you want to create more and more uh, alignment around can we land customers quickly and can we expand? Eventually, the customer lifetime value in a good uh, SaaS business allows the customers to buy more as they grow, but make the first interaction very simple. So pricing and packaging, your roadmap and your investment is going to be key part of that. Uh, what is the business KPI we are trying to optimize? And this is a, a major KPI that indicates how scalable are you in your go-to-market is net dollar retention. Um, it's basically measuring how much the ARR grows over time, uh, including uh, customer expansion and negative churn as well. So if this number grows up in most product-led companies, you can see that net dollar retention is even above 120%. It means they're able to scale uh, in their customer acquisition, but also they're able to sell more with less. And the way they do it is basically through the product. The, the product is driving that adoption. Increase of usage drive this revenue up. And net dollar retention is valued by the market. It will affect the valuation of your company. So if you look at 
the, the market today, look for the net dollar retention. This is a major uh, KPI to see, and this is what you want to optimize for as a lagging indicator to your product effort. So I'm going to introduce a, a framework you should uh, probably use as uh, to optimize that, and I call it the value path framework. If I look at the spectrum of customers that you have today, they move from early value to true value. The more customers you're moving toward true value using deeper sticky features, the more likely uh, the likelihood is growing for them to actually renew. So if you think about that, you want to build an iterative process to analyze that and to create a scalable and, and personalized experiences to help push that, them towards that outcome. And you can really leverage your product and features to do so. One of the best quotes I actually like from Elon Musk is, when you're constantly thinking about what you've done and how you could be better, you can actually make better products. You want to go back to these core features that you already released maybe six months ago, maybe two years ago. These are the core bread and butter of your uh, product, but now in these days, your customers expect potentially more. They may either want them to be, to be simplified or richer in functionality, and there's a lot of pressure when you're building a roadmap to build new things and deliver new things because this is what kind of you expect from your roadmap. But what you want to do is say, hey, I'm going to help you with key business KPI. And for that, I need a bucket uh, and resources to address the core functionality because I want to optimize that customer journey towards outcome as opposed to lend new features that eventually might lead to complexity. So you want to make sure that uh, you're focusing on the value path as you're prioritizing your roadmap. So one of the uh, key elements to do, and it's a simple exercise, is build this value path, your user journey. And we, we basically slice that by the customer journey. You have the first initial onboarding, first 30 days might be a trial, might be 90 days, uh, first interaction with your product, then you have initial value, they start using the basic functionality, and then they go to true value, the more advanced features, the more scalable, the admin features. Um, and you want to make sure that you're mapping these uh, stages of the customer journey and picking those three to five key features that if customers will use, you know they're experiencing value. So that should feed into your data analysis saying, what am I trying to optimize, where customers are getting stuck, uh, and first addressing that before you move on to the next stage and before you move on to releasing new features. Another uh, experiment we've done with Adobe for quite some time is analyzing how can you inf better influence uh, users in that second and third stage. And what we found is when you build the right segmentation of uh, potential customers, what we've done is actually we took two control groups, one set of users that uh, basically we didn't touch, uh, they experienced the product as is, and the second group uh, we built those nurturing campaigns, in-app campaigns, to surface those value moments within the product. And the, the outcome was pretty amazing to see how we, when you're messaging contextually um, and just showing the next best action for your customers, you're able to increase uh, their awareness to these key features, number one. And number two, once they use these features, you know that they're gonna be, uh, your product is going to be stickier. So we saw that obviously the segmentation of usage, historical usage is important. We saw that you shouldn't show more than two to three steps in these walkthroughs. You just, user tends to want to search for the next action um, and basically take it from there. Uh, so also the frequency, how often you try. Uh, these are great insights that we inferred from this research. Uh, for example, we realized that in B2B, you want to try more than once. Companies, users are coming in, that are trying to do something, suddenly they see a message, they might ignore it, ignore it first. So you want to make sure that you have a, a frequency set up to make sure that you nurture them and do it as contextual as possible. Um, another very important thing is to learn from your customers. Um, in many companies, you use NPS. NPS is a very aggregated metric, right? It's very hard to understand why is the NPS is very positive or negative. Uh, and especially when it comes to some feedback the customer just uh, sent you. Uh, one way to address that is with a more customer effort score style of, of surveys when you can be very specific uh, and, and score the value drivers, those key features you're trying to optimize. 
Have your customers just uh, score them and tell you what would they expect. Do they need more functionality or they actually need more usability? Um, this is a very actionable type of input side by side with your analytics because if they use it, it doesn't mean they're happy with it. They might have to use it. It's just the tool they chose now, but comes renewal, they might just swap to another tool because, again, it lacked functionality or visibility or it was just too complex. So these type of surveys should fit into your data strategy as you're building your roadmap, and that can fit into that uh, as a, a powerful input. Another way to uh, improve the growth retention as, as features is constantly making sure that your messaging, what's coming, what type of investment you're doing in your roadmap, this is basically what uh, going to uh, make your customers more successful and you want to make sure that they align with you. Second is to provide them with aggregated outcome of your solution. Don't assume that your customer understand or um, realizes the true value of your solution if you're not serving up that type of summary to them. They need to understand what type of outcome uh, have, we, have we received with your solution and you should do it in a, on, a, on a monthly basis and not try to do it just before renewal. So these are good two tactics to follow just to make sure that you're constantly showing the investment and showing the outcome for your customers. So before I wrap up, uh, the core metrics that you want to monitor when you optimize growth revenue retention, which is, again is the most impactful one and sometimes the best one to start with. When people think about product-led growth, they normally go for to free trial or freemium. But actually a mature business might benefit way more from retention-led growth. So a couple of key metrics that you want to mo monitor is one is the frequency. We know the classic uh, weekly or monthly active users um, that you want to track. Also, how many business days are they using your solution? It's kind of showing how much of a habit is your solution. If they use it on a daily basis, that you know that any small tweak of usability is going to uh, make a lot of uh, impact on them, as opposed to a person that comes once a month where you need to uh, take care of other type of elements. It's not really worth for you to invest in very advanced features because it's not yet a habit. The other two elements is the value drivers, those core features that you mapped in that framework. You want to track their progress. The more customers are active, the more new customers you have, is this value driver, the feature uses, trending up the same way? If not, you realize that you're basically bringing more customers in, but in the spectrum between early value to true value, they're still very low, so you want to double click into that and make sure that you're making that path more uh, consumable for them. And the last element, as we said before, is the user feedback. Because usage sometimes can be very, very green, but eventually your customer is struggling with this type of uh, uh, either they miss functionality or they actually feel that usability is a challenge. So wrapping up, uh, when you want to drive product-led growth, you can focus on these two uh, uh, growth metrics. And today it's becoming a must-have to just help your company scale. Uh, you want to tie acquisition and retention with your core uh, product metrics. You want to prioritize your roadmap for outcome, not necessarily new features. Uh, and you want to create iterative process when you're learning from your customer input what should you focus next before you deliver new functionality. So with that, uh, we're gonna, we have actually a product like growth uh, book available in our booth. Uh, first, first come, first serve. So feel free to either download the soft copy or just grab the book from the booth with a lot more PLG tactics. And I'll be uh, available for a virtual Q&A, so enough through the, through the hopping platform. Thank you very much.